What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about three rookie mistakes I've made in the past two and a half years while stacking copper, gold, and silver. But really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers. And if you want to help support the channel by getting some DYDSS merchandise, of course we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies which are up for grabs along with three new designs, the three nines fine, the four nines fine, and the 90% t-shirt and hoodie available in black, white, gray, red, blue, and pink. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance, it's more than appreciated. But today I wanted to break down three rookie mistakes I've made in my going on two and a half year stacking journey or whatever you wanna call it. One rookie mistake of copper, one of gold, and one of silver, and that's the order we're gonna be going in. So first and foremost, when it comes to copper, I, as I've stated several times on this channel and my second channel, I do in fact stack copper. I stack free copper. I do not convert my dollars into copper, I do not quote unquote, buy copper or spend money on copper. I do pick up copper, but only when it's free. That scrap copper, those 95% copper pennies, those are what I go after, and they do not cost me any money in any way, shape, or form. However, the first rookie mistake I've made while stacking was just the opposite of that. When I first got started with copper, I would actually pick up some copper bullion from these online precious, and I guess you could say industrial metal dealer storefronts, I picked up copper rounds. One ounce copper rounds. Now, was this anything terrible or horrible to do? No, it cost close to nothing, but the premiums are astronomical. You do not realize it because it's really only like a dollar or two, maybe three dollars. I, I forget how many dollars I converted into one ounce of copper for, but even if it was two, three dollars, that is still significantly higher than I needed to. That is significantly higher than what an ounce of copper is even worth. So my first rookie mistake was putting dollars into copper rather than just stacking free copper. I didn't realize that there was so much free copper out there for the taking. All you have to do is take it. I've put videos out regarding how to get free copper, how I get free copper, and different methods of stacking copper for absolutely no dollar amount. You can go check those out if you want to. Not a lot of people stack copper though. So moving forward away from copper, I also want to talk about a rookie mistake that I made regarding gold. Gold is something that I started to stack a couple months after I started to stack silver. In fact, I picked up my first piece of copper the same day I picked up my first piece of gold. But my very first piece of gold was actually a one gram gold bar. That was my rookie mistake. Is there anything inherently wrong with it? No. Absolutely not. Online precious metal dealers and coin shops, they quote unquote sell one gram gold bars for a reason. There's a market for it. People enjoy converting their dollars into one gram gold bars. However, similar to the copper round that I picked up, the premiums were astronomical, which I don't necessarily mind. I know for a fact that gold has a higher premium, especially the way that I stack gold, which is on a fractional level. I will just no longer ever pick up anything below one tenth of an ounce. Unless, of course, I can get an absolutely fantastic deal on it. If somebody offered me a one gram gold bar for spot or close to spot, I'm not an idiot. I'll pick it up. I'll grab it. But I will not pay a ridiculously high premium for a one gram gold bar ever again. At least, I can't ever see myself doing that. And the main reason for this is because, number one, the premium, but two, 
the fact that it's a bar. I'm not as into bars as I am coins. I prefer coins over rounds and bars. That's my preference. It's all personal preference. If you disagree with me, disagree with me. That's fine. I prefer coins. I prefer government minted coins with face value because coins at the end of the day, they have such a significantly higher level of notoriety. They are trusted. They are respected. They are reputable. They are recognizable. Everyone knows what they are, especially if it's a coin like a maple leaf or an American Eagle or a Libertad or a Panda. These are coins that everyone in the stacking community knows about, whether it's online or offline, whether it's a coin shop, whether it's a coin show, whether it's a coin stacking video, everyone knows what these coins are. Not everybody's familiar with these basic generic secondary market rounds and bars. So was it a rookie mistake to pick up a one gram gold bar? Not necessarily, but in my opinion, it was a rookie mistake to pay that high of a premium on something with such a low level of notoriety. That was what I consider to be a rookie mistake. Just my opinion, just from my perspective. Nothing on this channel is financial advice and all I say in my videos is for entertainment purposes only and to help initiate a conversation. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts? But now moving away from copper, moving away from gold, I wanna talk about silver. Now there are two rookie mistakes when it comes to silver. Now the first one is probably the most funny rookie mistake that there is because there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's just a very, very, very new stacker thing to do or a new stacker thing to say, which was referring to rounds as coins. This is probably something that probably everyone has done or at least for the most part because it's just such a simple rookie mistake referring to a round as a coin is it a bad thing to do? Is it a terrible, horrible mistake? No. Is it easily correctable? Yeah. Is it funny? Yeah. I went back to my very first silver video ever, and number one, I referred to it as an investment, which it absolutely is not, and two, I was showing off my new silver coin. It was my very first silver coin. It was a one troy ounce silver round that I picked up from a coin shop. I just didn't know the difference. I thought they were synonymous. I thought coin meant round and round meant coin. I knew the difference between a bar and a coin, which at the time I thought was just the shape. I was like, okay, a rectangle, that's the bar, the round, that's a coin. I didn't know the difference between a round and a coin. I thought they were the same thing. I didn't realize that one was essentially just a circular shaped bar while a bar is just a rectangular shaped round, while a coin on the other hand doesn't necessarily have to be round as long as it has face value and it was minted by a sovereign government. On everyone's first day of stacking silver or gold, that's not really something that everybody knows right off the bat. I had no idea. My very first round I was referring to as a coin. Now, as for my second rookie mistake when it comes to silver, it has to do with airtight capsules and tubes. Now I've made videos about this in the past and the ones that I use for coins, I link in the description if anybody's interested in picking up airtight tubes and capsules. The mistake I made or the rookie mistake that I made was putting them on my silver rounds. I thought at the very beginning it was probably in my best interest to protect all of my silver as best as I possibly can. Yeah, obviously in a safe, but I was trying to protect the face of the rounds and the coins as well. So I was putting my basic generic secondary market rounds in airtight capsules, and then I was putting those airtight capsules in airtight tubes. Double the airtight protection, double the water resistance, and I had absolutely no idea that Basic, generic, secondary market rounds, and also, for the record, even coins don't necessarily need to be protected that way. You don't really need to protect against them tarnishing or toning or moisture in the air or fingerprints or anything like that. It doesn't really matter. When it comes to rounds, 
And also when it comes to coins, now I'm not referring to collectible coins, I'm not referring to coins that have a high collector's value or numismatics or rare low mintage coins, that's not what I'm referring to. What I was doing at the very beginning was putting my basic generic secondary market rounds in those airtight capsules. And then I moved on over to coins rather than rounds and then I started putting my American Silver Eagles in airtight tubes and capsules. I didn't know the difference. I didn't think it mattered. Like I said about my previous two, or I guess technically my previous three rookie mistakes, was there anything inherently wrong with it? No, absolutely not. Putting rounds and silver eagles in airtight capsules will not hurt the rounds or the coins. It does not do anything bad to the silver. It's just an unnecessary thing to do. And at the very beginning, when I first started stacking, I had absolutely no idea. When I first got started stacking, I said, hey, you know what? I'm gonna spend the extra money to keep these rounds and coins as protected as possible to prevent them from getting fingerprints, to prevent them from toning or, or tarnishing or, or potentially discoloring in any way, shape or form. I thought that's what the airtight capsules would do. I thought that that's what they were for. And I thought that every single piece of silver of mine should be put into airtight tubes and capsules. Did I do that? Absolutely not. I only filled up, I think, half a tube of silver rounds and half a tube of silver eagles because by that time I realized it wasn't anything that I needed to do. And like I said, was this anything bad? Was this anything horrible? Was this anything atrocious? Was there anything inherently wrong with this? No, it just cost a couple extra dollars and takes up a little bit more room than a mint tube, for example. But like I said, the airtight tubes along with the mint tubes will both be linked in the description in case anybody is looking for tubes to keep their silver in, whether it's a basic generic secondary market round or maybe it's a silver eagle or Canadian maple leaf or a collectible coin depending on if you want to just store it properly or if you want to protect it from tarnishing or toning or whatever the case may be I will be including all of my silver slash gold related product links in the description some of Amazon affiliate links in case anybody's interested in checking some of those out if anybody's in the market for some tubes to store their silver and gold coins in. If you guys want to head on down to the comments and let me know what are some of your rookie mistakes, something that you learned along the way that maybe you made a little bit of a mistake at the very beginning. Maybe you started doing it this way, even though you didn't need to. Maybe you learned sooner rather than later. Who knows? Maybe you learned years and years down the line. Maybe something that didn't really matter, but it cost you a little bit of money. Maybe it didn't cost you any money, but it actually did damage to your coins. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, anything and everything related to rookie mistakes. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to subscribe. New videos every single day, 365 days a year. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit a thousand subscribers, so help us out. And if you wanna help support the channel, in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products, t-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, and many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations. And of course, three new products, the three nines fine, the four nines fine, and the 90% t-shirt and hoodie available in black, white, gray, red, blue, and pink. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And once again, I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know what was your biggest rookie mistake when it comes to stacking the precious metals or even the industrial metals. Have you made any mistakes when it comes to the silver, the gold, the copper, maybe even platinum, palladium, rhodium? What were some of your rookie mistakes and how long did it take you to correct those mistakes and what did it do? Did it cost you more money than it needed to? Maybe it damaged some of your coins? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.